Hello, this is Alex Eames from Raspi.tv. Hello, today I'm going to have a look at the Pi Juice and try it out on the Raspberry Pi, install the software, and generally have an overview of how it performs. So let's get on with that, shall we? Before plugging it into the Pi with the BP7X battery, um, it was necessary to check the position of the dip switch, and both switches need to be in the up position. So it fits on the 40 pin header in the normal way, just like any standard hat. So the first thing I did was install the software before connecting it. This is a simple matter of just typing sudo apt-get install pyjuice, or one word, lower case. Then I powered off the Pi, connected the pyjuice, and booted it back up again. One of the joys of beta testing a product is that you don't get access to the final consumer version of the instructions or sometimes you don't get access to any instructions so I've had to guess how to connect it up putting it on the Pi is easy there's a, a power in here so I assumed that the best thing to do would be just to connect the official Raspberry Pi power supply to that and somehow this would power the Pi either back powering it through the GPIO or whatever as it turned out that guess was fine it worked and it started charging. So connecting it up for the first time, simply a matter of pushing the board onto the Pi, connect HDMI, and then connect the power there to charge the Pi Juice. And when you boot with the Pi Juice plugged in and charging, this is what you see. So you'll notice there's a little icon up here, which is the Pi Juice icon showing you that it's plugged in and charging. And you'll also see that if you go to Preferences, here you've got Pi Juice Configuration. So let's open that. So the first tab shows you percentage charged and the voltage and amps going in. Next tab you've got a wake up alarm, presumably this is so that you can switch the Pi on automatically in a timed manner. Here you've got various watchdogs and wake ups to give warnings. Next tab you've got system events, so you can have it run something, a program of your own choosing at various different events, whether there's a low charge, low battery voltage, etc. Or it looks like you can program the buttons on the board. You've got three buttons on the Pi Juice, so you can tweak them to do whatever it is you want. And here's a place where you can presumably link to your own scripts. Configure Hat, this gives you the option to tweak the configuration. So you've got the option to change the I squared C address here, tweak the buttons to make them do whatever you want on short press, single press, double press, long press, etc, etc. So you've got full flexibility here, which is great. Here looks like you can make the LEDs do what you want them to. So at the moment, LED 1 is the charge status indicator. So you've got various parameters for red, green and blue. And D2 doesn't look like it's set. And here you've got battery characteristics. And this gives you an opportunity to update the firmware, which I'm not going to do right now because it's working. So that all seems fairly self-explanatory. At the moment the system saves whatever settings you changed when you exit the program. So it looks like we're 100% charged now. That took about 15 or 20 minutes from first boot on an official Pi power supply. I'm now going to switch off that power supply and let's see what happens. Is it going to work? Is the Pi going to die? Or is it going to work just fine? Okay, so the battery indicator changed here and the charge status or well, the battery charge status changed there and it also says now not present USB micro power input 
All right, let's see if that changes if we turn it back on. Yes, now it says present, having turned it back on. So it seems to be working well, and it says no fault. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to charge the battery fully while it's not connected to the Pi, and then I'm going to run a test getting it to log some data every minute and we'll see exactly how long it lasts. I'll probably run that overnight. I'm expecting four to six hours. We'll see exactly how long it lasts and how well it does. So I've fully charged it. Currently we're on the mains and I'm just gonna tweak the cron to re-enable the logging because I switched it off to avoid deleting the data. Okay, now we should be logging every minute and I'm going to reboot and at the same time as doing that I'm going to pull the plug here we go, by the time it comes back up it should have switched over to Pyjuice Power okay, what's it showing? showing 97% right, I'm going to leave that switched on now until it conks out by itself so I've powered it up again after it switched itself off and you can see here that it stayed on for four hours and nine minutes switched off at 11 minutes past one in the morning while I was asleep so four hours and nine minutes slightly less it's about 20 minutes less than the four and a half hours that my calculations suggested it might last I'm going to charge it up and run it again. Sometimes lithium batteries don't give their full capacity on the first couple of charge cycles. We'll see. In the end I ran this test four times. The first time it was four hours and nine minutes. The second time I ran it in the workshop. The first time it was in the office. It was a bit colder in the workshop. It was only 16 degrees or so. And that time it lasted three hours and 50 minutes. When I realised what was happening, I decided to run another couple of experiments back in the office again. So the next one lasted 4 hours and 15 and the last one lasted 4 hours and 9. The office temperature is about 21 degrees. So there's probably some kind of temperature related effect going on here but you can't make a true comparison unless the conditions are the same. So with 409, 414 and 409 in the office at 21 degrees, I think you can safely say that this Pi Juice battery lasts on a Pi 3B at idle for around 4 hours and 10 minutes, which is perhaps 20 minutes less than my rough calculations suggested it might, so it's not far off. It's it's pretty much on track. So in summary then, the, the Pi Juice battery when fully charged will power a Pi 3B for about 4 hours and 10 minutes. There's quite a few capabilities of the software which I haven't fully explored, but I'll leave that for you. The software works pretty well. It's going to have some further refinement, but it does work pretty well already. So what's left? Just the solar panels. Let's have a look at those now, shall we? Here I have a fully discharged Pi Juice, the small solar panel, a USB cable that I've hacked so that I can clamp meter it, and a little clamp meter that will tell me in a non-invasive way what the current is of the charge. It's a fairly overcast day so I'm not expecting great results but if the sun comes out that would be great we can get two readings. So we'll set up the clamp meter switch it on, put it on DC zero it and then clamp if I've got it the right way around, it'll give us positive reading. If it's wrong, it'll be negative. So we'll open the solar panel. It really is rather overcast today. At the moment it's charging at about 0.1 amps, but it goes down to something like 0.03 when it's really cloudy. But the most I've seen it go up to is 0.2 when the sun actually poked through the clouds. Oh, and there we are now, there you can see it. But on a proper sunny day I would hope it would go a little higher. There you go, 0.26 even, 
So point 0.2 at 5 volts is about 1 watt. It's supposed to be a 6 watt panel. So you'd hope it might be possible on a bright sunny day to get an amp out of it. Let's see what happens when we close it. Yeah, it goes right down to experimental error, I guess. Pretty much zero. Okay, now let's have a go with the large panel, the 40 watt panel. So just zero the meter. And clamp. And let's see. Oh, that's giving us, I don't know if you can see that. That's giving us 0.75. It's not very sunny, but the sun is coming out. Oh, bit of shadow now. You can see that there is a bit of sun. I'm also shading part of one of the panels myself. You can see the shadow of the camera there as well, but never mind. 0.76 amps. Now we're talking. That's, that's a useful figure. Uh, as I said in my original video, um, sadly, the UK is not a very sunny country, so you need a big panel to get results. So after the solar panel test, I decided to bring it in to the workshop and charge it on a 2.5 amp official Raspberry Pi power supply and at that point when I made the measurement 0.75 I realized the charge current is being limited by the charge circuitry here so the large solar panel is almost certainly capable of delivering more than 0.7 amps it's just the charge circuit on the underside of the Pi juice board itself is limiting it to 0.75 so, so there's no question in my mind that the 40 watt panel is sufficient if you want to run a Pi and charge the Pi juice in the UK. Recapping the solar panels experiments, I didn't have much opportunity to have a good play with these because of time and weather constraints, but the small 6 watt solar panel, I managed to get 0.3 of an amp out of it on a fairly overcast day. I think it should be capable of at least a whole amp at 5 volts on a good bright sunny day facing the right direction. But I haven't had a chance to verify that. Maybe the next reviewer will be more lucky with the weather, we'll see. The large 40 watt panel, I managed to get about 0.7, and I think at one point, 0.9 amps out of it. I'm pretty sure that was limited by the battery charge circuitry. If I'd have managed to load it up with lots and lots of different devices, I expect it would have been capable of quite a bit more. I think that panel on a bright sunny day should be capable of putting out something between 5 and 8 amps, which is, let's face it, enough if you're out backpacking or something to charge all your devices on the go, which is awesome and I can't wait to have one of those myself. And as for the Pi Juice itself, with the default battery pack that came with the one that I was sent for review, you can get about 4 hours and 10 minutes on a Pi 3B when it's idling. Depending on how complex your system is, you at least have some ballpark figure to work from as to what to expect. I've had a lot of fun reviewing these products. I hope the rest of the manufacturing goes well for Pi Supply and that they're able to ship these out to the backers soon because it looks like it's going to be a really nice product. There's still a few software bits to tweak and instructions to write, so they're not quite there yet, but they're working on it and expect to be there quite soon. So I hope you've enjoyed these videos. This was Alex Eames from raspi.tv. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like, share and subscribe.